This guy from the New York Times asked me what I'd like my epitaph to be. I said, he pushed the peanut forward. I tried to move things on a little. That is a quote from Henry Spira and it is from the book Ethics into Action by Peter Singer. So welcome, mere mortals, to another book review. Why did I read this book? Well, I'd come across the Aussie philosopher Peter Singer in the past and I liked his thinking, his style. And the book I read before was a compilation of his mini essays and I was expecting something very similar in this one wrong turned out to be completely different but in a very nice way so this book was published in 1998 and it's a biography of the life of Henry Spira so uh, Henry Spira actually lived from 1927 to 1998 so this book was published around the year that he actually died Uh, he was first in the merchant navy he was a, a, a I believe born in Belgium as a Jew his people his father and mother sort of uh, missed the whole Holocaust, thankfully, moved to the United States. And the the first, I guess, one-fifth of the book ta- talks up uh, about of his life in the being in the a- army, in the Navy, as a journalist for the human rights, and then finally getting on to the main passion of his life, I would say, the animal liberation movement. He had many, many successes in his life, and I guess you'd call him one of the founders of the the modern era of of bringing animal rights to the fore before it was actually a a thing. And so, uh, some of his most classic and enduring examples of of work that he's done was convincing the the public or raising awareness, and then not only raising awareness but putting an end to the animal testing of. Um, I believe it was rat, uh, cats in the National Museum of National History in New York, uh, where they were desexing cats, blinding them, seeing, doing all these things to cats, seeing what would happen to their um, their reproductive, their fertility, and things like that. Some of the other things, such as the Dre's test, which was used by cosmetic companies to um, test on the eyeballs of, of rabbits, their products, the LD50, so the lethal dose 50, which was a test determined to find out if you fed a certain product to a amount of animals, how much you would need to kill 50% of the animals. So the test was always going to kill 50% of whatever batch of animals they were using uh, before finally getting on to some of the bigger name stuff. So such as um, Purdue chickens, KFC and fighting against McDonald's as well. So it goes over, I guess, you know, it covers a long span of his life, probably 25 years in, in quite detail, but also, you know, skipping over large parts, focusing on the main causes that he helped to promote. So what are some of the themes of the book? Well, I'm splitting this up into the two main things that sort of come into the title, ethics into action. So the problem, and I would guess you say it's a mix of ethics and reality. What I really got from this was there was a lot of planning, research and selection of a target that he would need to do before he actually implemented a strategy. So there was actually a little bit of a quote here, which I thought was quite useful in what he would say is how he determines um, if it's if it's something that should be campaigning against. Uh, so he was talking about there was a state law allowing laboratories to take dog and cats from shelters to use them for animal testing and usually with the end result of them being killed. And he would ju- he said, it just defies common sense that the average guy in the street would say, hey, that's a real neat thing to do. And so that's something he would ask. He would constantly be interacting with not only the activist groups that he ran in, but also lay people to determine, okay, is this something that's actually worth fighting about? Is Not only is this ethically something worth fighting about, but is it something that um, in reality we can make a difference with? So this required a whole lot of pre-work of sorting out your ethics. And I guess it started... Um, he actually only started in the animal liberation movement from when he was about 46 years old to when he died in 71. So he basically lived a you know half a lifetime before he even thought about animal ethics. Granted, it was in the areas of human rights and labor unions and things like this. So he had experience fighting against rules and systems and whatnot that he thought were ethically not correct. But he had to learn how the world and how people behaved before he could really dive into the the full thing. So that's the problem side of things. There's a problem. What is some of the pre-work I can do to actually solve it? Then comes the action. So will it work? And that's one of the big questions he asked. So 
it's it's funny i think there's a need to switch from almost something irrational to rational but there's a point so I think before you start anything, you need to sort of be irrational about it because if you look at the statistics, the odds, the the likelihood of, of you succeeding in whatever venture it is you're trying to do, starting a small business, becoming a famous Hollywood movie star, doing whatever, it, it really doesn't matter. The odds are you're just not going to succeed. But if everyone had that mentality, no one would try it. And so then it's like, well, okay, why can't it be me then? And that's when it gets into all the other, you know, things such as uh, your perseverance, your hard work, your talent, all that mixed up into it. And so I think I think there's some something irrational you need to have at the start, which is I guess where you can take the the just do it, the Nike logo, uh, or as Seth Godin would say, merely do it, or as Juan would say, do it, <laughs> and. And then, but then there's this point where you need to switch to something more rational and say, okay, I'm doing something. Is this actually effective? Is this something I can keep up for the long term? Is this actually going to produce results? So towards the end of the book, there's a list of the key points. And these were actually just bang on. So I'm going to read out these 10 and um, I'm not doing them justice, but here we go. Try to understand the public's current thinking and where it could be encouraged to go tomorrow. Above all, keep in touch with reality. Number two, select a target on the basis of vulnerabilities to public opinion, the intensity of suffering and the opportunities for change. Number three, set goals that are achievable. Bring about meaningful change one step at a time. Raising awareness is not enough. Bang on with that one. Number four, establish credible sources of information and documentation. Never assume anything. Never deceive the media or the public. Maintain credibility. Don't exaggerate or hype the issue. Number five, don't divide the world into saints and sinners. Number six, six, seek dialogue and attempt to work together to solve problems. Position issues as problems with solutions. This is best done by presenting realistic alternatives. Number seven, be ready for confrontation if your target remains unresponsive. If accepted channels don't work, prepare an escalating public awareness campaign to place your adversary on the defense. Number eight, avoid bureaucracy. Number nine, don't assume that the that only le, le, legislation or legal action can solve the problem. And then finally, number 10, ask yourself, will it work? Now, I know I've just read those out. I really want to dive into each and every one of them because I've, I actually find each of them pretty fascinating and, and worthy of, of talking about. But I don't want the book review to, to go on too long. So I'll, I'll sort of sum up what actually Peter um, Singer was put in this paragraph, which was... Uh, before you launch a campaign or continue with a campaign already begun, ask yourself if it will work. If you can't give a realistic account of the ways in which your plans will achieve your objectives, you need to change your plans. Keeping in touch with what the public is thinking, selecting a target, setting an achievable goal, getting accurate information, maintaining credibility, suggesting alternative solutions, being ready to talk to adversaries, adversaries or to confront them if they will not talk. All of these are directed to this one thing. Will it work? And I think that's that's what really sets a, uh, Henry Spira apart from... I, maybe a, I, I don't know enough about activists in general. All I know is you know, what you sort of see on TV, which is the loud ones who get the attention, uh, which are not really probably the main activists that are out there. So uh, I, I really... Reading this book and focusing on a single individual made me go, yeah, wow, this guy was worthy of praise he accomplished a lot in his life even though it was at a, in a time where you would say mm, odds are you're probably not going to be able to do it and i greatly respect him for doing that it's just an amazing amazing achievement to um, see someone actually putting their ethics into action and uh, yeah the, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the ethics part right in the right in the end so onto my personal observations an individual is powerless to to change the world wrong wrong i think this book really emphasizes that hey no if it doesn't matter how small you are there are changes you can implement now not everyone's going to be able to change the world in in a sense in the big sense the attention grabbing headlines this person did this thing we're going to mars we're doing this with you know nelson mandela type things no not everyone can do that but I think the point is of this book was just showing, look, even if you're a small guy, you can actually have a tremendous amount of impact if you are willing to work hard, if you're willing to put in 
um, a long-term sort of outlook and strategy if you're willing to consider the reality of the situation and not just do what you think will work you actually have to make sure um, it does work so <laughs> it's a it's it's a it's a hard thing to to get your head around that that sort of point, but I think it is essential and um, very noteworthy that he managed Henry Spira actually managed to accomplish a lot of the things that he set out to do. Finding meaning as well can be non-standard. So if you looked at the life of Henry Spira, you would probably say, "Man, this guy didn't actually have a lot of meaning in his life." You could almost say he's a loser in a lot of contexts. He didn't have a lot of money. He had, you know, off and on jobs for all of his career. He didn't have a lifelong partner. He didn't have kids. He didn't have, you know, I, I, he definitely had a non-standard life. And I think that's ex that's okay as as long as you are working on something. And he, right at the end of the book, he talks about when he's dying, and um, so he he does an interview with Peter Singer, who's who's talking to him about a meaning and and how he views his own life and he he was just saying yeah no this is i i did what i wanted to do this is yes my life is a little bit different from from most people but i think i i wouldn't take it back i wouldn't do anything different uh, and there's also he had a little point about having enjoyment to be effective and there was a little quote from another person here could uh, it was an anarchist Emma Goldman and Goldman liked dancing and a lot of her anarchist friends were would bully her or tease her and, and regarded it as frivolous. And she said, if I can't dance, I don't want your revolution. So even though both of these people, I would say, were sort of revolutionary, they, they grabbed the enjoyment that they could out of life. And uh, yeah, huge respect for that. So my final observation is I'm actually adding Mr. Spira to my list of, I guess, inspirations. Reading his biography just made me go, wow, this guy, he made a difference and he did it in a way that I really respected, which was an individual going out on his own. He didn't need the backing of, you know, tremendous amount of money. He wasn't trying to do it for the fame or the fortune or all the normal things that sort of start to creep in when you start to get some, some, some success. No, he stuck true to himself to the end. He made a big difference. And man, um, I'm adding him up there in terms of Mark Twain, uh, Eric Blair, or George or Orwell, as he's known as, um, people who walk the walk, who were pragmatic in their life and who, made huge differences to the world but not even that's not the main point it's not that they made huge differences it's that they they tried their best to make a huge difference and man mad respect for that so in summary it's probably uh, he, he's probably one of the people i would be most comfortable in saying that he's an unsung hero i've 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 used the he word hero very very uh, strictly I, d I don't use that for for many cases but man this guy Definitely didn't have the recognition. Uh, I've never heard of him before um, until this book. And yeah, wow, wow. Uh, a person who tried their hardest, who really thought deeply about their own ethics and the world and tried to make the world a better place. So this book lays open the, the hard work of a remarkable, remarkable man who did make a difference. And uh, I would say it's not a book for sorting out your ethics uh, it's more about how you can actually implement them into action. So if you're looking for reasoned arguments of why he was doing what he was doing, that's a different story and that's a book for another day. This was talking more about actual action. You've, you've already got your sort of baseline set up. How are you going to pragmatically put that into the world? So I'm giving the book Ethics into Action by Peter Singer a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, that's a very good score for me. I, I quite enjoyed this book and I would recommend it to all activists I think it's um, the especially those last 10 points which you sort of need to read the whole book to be able to to really appreciate those last 10 points because then you can see how he did it with his own campaigns against McDonald's against some of these real big and real small industries which were very very reluctant to change how he did that and how it's he was always trying to help people and solve a problem he wasn't pointing blame he wasn't creating adversaries unnecessarily he was trying to make the world a better place so very very cool what's something pragmatic i'm going to take from this well 
I think this has convinced me really firmly that the small individual steps do count. And so I should do more of them. So one and I do monthly goals all the time. And I, I think those are, you know, they're small things that I like to do, pick up litter from here and there, do some volunteering activities. Sometimes it does feel small, but I think just keeping in mind, hey, the small steps, if you take a long enough outlook and you're continually trying to improve and and do better and put your ethics into action, you can make a difference. So um, that's that's instilled some confidence, motivation into me and the, uh, you know, there's a lot of wise words in this that I, I'm going to take out. So what are your thoughts on actually putting ethics into action? Do you have any thoughts on activists and, and how they go about things? Are you an activist yourself and what do you think of Mr. Henry Spira and um, the works of, of Peter Singer? I would love to know all of those. I'm going to leave it there for today. It's been a bit of a, a big review and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So Kyron out. <laughs>